Dragon Ball Sparking Zero is an absolute banger. Let's get into it. When I tell you that I first started this game up and I was immediately impressed by the visuals of just the menus alone, watching the animations as you move from like the episode battles to the training section to the multiplayer section, all of it just seems really cool watching Goku kind of naturally progress to the environment. So off the rip, I was like, okay, this game's all right, they did some work here. And then once you get into the actual gameplay of it, I had to spend some time in the training environments just to check out the ultimates. And let me tell you, the visuals for this are pretty damn impressive. The character models look great. I love the animations for like the special abilities, like when you use the Kamehameha wave and stuff like that. I mean, it looks like it's something that they ripped straight out of the anime. Absolutely in love with it. Now, obviously I have a little bit of like a rose tinted glasses for this because I'm a huge Dragon Ball fan, so this is the game that I was definitely looking forward to out of all the games that were coming out this year. Um, yeah, it just was really fun. I loved trying out the different transformations and abilities. I liked uh, swapping out the characters and doing it mid-battle was really cool. I did kind of have a little bit of confusion at first. It wasn't really super apparent to me that I had to wait for like a cooldown to finish before I could swap my character again. So I was like, what the hell? Maybe my controller is not working. but. I guess that's what it was and yeah it overall it was really enjoyable just like getting in there and playing as each of my favorite characters and watching their animations play out when i'm using ultimate abilities the story for the game is pretty fun uh i i liked that like there was they talked about what if scenarios for this game but even when you play the main campaign there are like alternate objectives that you can complete that will actually open up like a what if scenario in the main campaign which is you know, for example, uh, when you go to fight Raditz, you can choose either go alone or fight with Piccolo. Um, and when you go alone, you know, you get a different cutscene and stuff like that, which is really interesting. Of course, I was one of those guys who bought the early access version because I knew this was a game that I was going to enjoy. And uh, it wasn't super apparent to me how you were able to access the alternative stories for the main quest line. So I was a little bit frustrated at first because I was like, how do you do it? I uh, was able to con uh, figure it out so that was like one of my only like initial gripes but once I figured out how you would do it I was like okay it's, I guess it's kind of straightforward but they probably could have put something in like a prompt that would have told you how to do it one of the things that I really liked about the main quest line is that it is really streamlined so a lot of times in these games you kind of play through the whole Dragon Ball Z storyline uh, but this felt really quick and smooth. You know, there were parts that, you know, when you weren't going to play as Goku and you were playing the Goku storyline, you didn't have to play them. So that was really nice just to kind of get through it really quick. Uh, and then you can go in through it and actually play with different characters. So you can play through the story from like, Goku's perspective and then play through Vegeta's perspective and so on. So that was actually a really cool feature. Definitely, if you're somebody who's new to the series, I would probably suggest, you know, maybe go watch the anime. But if you're already a fan of the series, then, you know, it makes sense. It's like you don't have to feel like you're trudging through the whole story all over again. You're just getting through, fighting the bad guys, having fun. I did check out some of the bonus battles in this game as well. Those are like their what-of scenarios, and that was really awesome. I got to play as Trunks, and you're being trained by Piccolo. I think that might have been one that was made by the developers. I don't know, but it was still pretty cool. I like that idea of people creating their own scenarios and sharing it. I uh, didn't really get into it myself, but... I usually just like to check out what the community is doing and then maybe I'll get inspired and I try it on my own. But honestly, it was pretty cool. I like the variety for it. I think there's some you have to unlock as well, but I'll get to those later on. There was an option to purchase anime background music for the game, which I didn't buy, but the music that was in the game was still pretty enjoyable. I mean, you're fighting, so I'm not really paying attention to the music that's playing in the background, but when I was listening, I enjoyed it. I mean, you get those anime soundtracks, you enjoy them. I think my only major gripe with the game was the multiplayer um, and maybe it was because I was in early access but it really took me a while to actually get into a match. You would click to play multiplayer and then you'd kind of sit in the lobby and you'd watch people fight and you know if there's somebody else that's waiting with you they might bounce out of the lobby so then you're stuck waiting for somebody to hop back into the lobby or you're stuck waiting for the match that's currently going on to finish and I think that's how it worked in like the Xenoverse games as well which I know is different but um it was kind of annoying you know I, I think i waited like 15 minutes at one point so it might be better now i've heard the game's like player count has pretty much doubled at least on steam so that's something to look forward to you know it might be a lot easier to get in a multiplayer matches but once i did it was actually pretty fun i i didn't think it played too bad it was 
very smooth. You know, the match kind of started off a little bit laggy, but then as it progressed, it started to kind of snap into place. So, I think as far as Bandai Namco games go, this is probably a pretty good launch as far, for multiplayer. I know in, in the past people have complained about how their multiplayer works for their games. But no, this was impressive. Uh, that was really my only complaint for it was just the wait times, but I think it'll probably be a lot better now that the game is officially out. So overall, this was a pretty damn good game. I liked the, the character models, the visuals were impressive. I mean, they did such a great job making each attack feel super powerful. Each key charge looks badass, you know, when your plan is like Gogeta Blue and you're just powering up. You just feel powerful, you know? Uh, the animations definitely feel like they were straight up ripped out of the anime. That's just how great they looked. There were some things about like the dialogue that I feel like they changed up, which didn't really feel necessary. My only true complaint was with the multiplayer. Uh, yeah, definitely just having to wait for a while that kind of bummed me out But I think it should be better now and overall this game is a banger for me So if you're a big anime fan or if you're a big fighter uh, fan definitely check this game out I think it's got a little bit of something for everybody uh, It's definitely gonna be on my game of the year list So let me know what you guys think down below if you've checked out Dragon Ball Spark Zero or if this is gonna make you want to check it out Let's talk about it. Peace